<laughs> let's make a delicious homemade pizza. You can put whatever toppings you want on it and as much or as little cheese as you like. And I think you're gonna be surprised at how quickly you can get this in and out of the oven and onto the table. We're making a delicious homemade pizza and we're going to start with my freezer bread dough. Now, if you haven't seen that video, you'll wanna check that out. So I'll put the links to those videos above and below. There's one for a heavy duty stand mixer. And in the video, I'm using my Anka's Room Assistant Mixer. You can also use a Bosch or a KitchenAid ProLine. The other video is for making the dough completely by hand. So you can use a bowl and a wooden spoon. And what that does is it is a big batch of dough that you portion and freeze, and that gives you a fresh loaf of bread each week for a month. But perhaps one week you'd like to make a pizza instead of bread, and that's perfectly fine. Now the leavening power of this dough lasts about four weeks in the freezer, but if it lingers in the freezer a little longer than that, it still makes very good pizza. The way to start is to take one of your portions of dough out of the freezer and put it on a plate in the refrigerator the night before or the morning of when you wanna bake your pizza. You'll want to work with cold dough directly from the refrigerator. Cold dough is so much easier to work with. And I'm going to use this inexpensive pizza pan that I picked up at a thrift shop for two or three dollars. It's 16 inches or 40 centimeters, but you can use a cookie sheet, that'll work just fine. And the first thing you wanna do is go preheat the oven. So position a rack in the center of the oven and set the temperature for 450 Fahrenheit and I'll have the metric measurements on the printable recipe which is available on my website chocolateboxcottage.tv now if you bake a lot like I do you might have a baking stone mine lives in the oven full-time and I really appreciate the way that it radiates heat back through the oven and makes things bake evenly I keep it on a lower rack and it's just fine for pizza Pour about a tablespoon of olive oil on your pizza pan or cookie sheet and oil it evenly. Pour another tablespoon of oil on a clean work surface and then use both your hands to rub it into a generous sized circle. And of course it would be a good idea to take rings off doing this. I'm going to drop them into a bowl over here. Got both of my palms oiled. Unwrap the pizza dough and set it right in the center of the oiled space. Now you can use your hands to press it out into a larger circle. You'll notice the cold dough doesn't stick to your hands. A rolling pin can be helpful too. Set the rolling pin in the center of the dough and roll away from yourself and then roll towards yourself and just go around the dough always starting in the center and rolling towards the outer edge to make a nice even shape. But don't worry too much about it being perfectly even because homemade pizza is already perfect. It's looking like our dough is ready to go in the pizza pan. So I'm just going to quickly pick it up and uh, working quickly is the key here. And then set it in the pan and just kind of work with it. Just keep stretching around the edges until it, until it mostly fills the pan. And as I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. Now it's time to make the sauce. The easiest route to pizza sauce is to simply take an eight ounce can of tomato sauce and stir in a little bit of salt and pepper, some oregano, maybe a little garlic powder. Stir that all together and spread it out in your pizza crust. That is perfectly fine. I have a lot of dried tomatoes in my pantry. These are dried from my garden and they include the skins and the seeds. They were just sliced and dried. And so I'm gonna use them today. Measure out a generous half cup packed of dried tomatoes. And I've got some boiling water in the tea kettle here. Need about a half a cup of boiling water. About the same amount of boiling water as tomatoes, more or less. We can adjust for consistency later if needed. Drop in a garlic clove several pinches of dried oregano, some salt and a little sugar to enhance the sweetness if you like. Mm -hmm. 
And by the way, it doesn't, you don't have to have a high speed blender like this. A regular household blender is fine. And the recipe for this is included in the printable recipe at chocolateboxcottage.tv. So you don't have to try to memorize it. Okay, we put the lid on and we're gonna let the blender do its job. You may have to scrape down the sides at some point just to make sure that all those dried tomatoes meet the blades and then keep going until it's smooth. We've got pizza sauce. Okay, let's take a look at our pizza sauce. It's thick. You see how it mounds up on the spatula here? That means it's gonna be good for pizza. We don't want a thin watery sauce because nobody likes soggy pizza crust. So a thick sauce is good. This is a good time to taste it. Mmm, so good. The intensity of the dried tomatoes is just delicious in this pizza sauce. I can taste the oregano and the garlic too. It's gonna to be delicious. All right, I'm gonna scrape it out of the blender jar and onto the pizza crust. Now for the fun part, spreading the sauce. <laughs> it's homemade pizza, it's all fun, right? Okay. There we go. Now next is cheese. I've got some grated mozzarella cheese. And one of the keys that I can give you with pizza is to make the toppings a little heavier around the edges and a little lighter in the center. This will help it cook all the way to the center so you don't end up with a raw doughy pizza in the middle because nobody likes that. And I've got a little cheddar cheese also to add here for a variety. If you have more than one kind of cheese, that just makes it more fun and more flavorful. And you can use as much or as little cheese as you like because this is your pizza. You get to make it the way you like it. I've also got some bacon. So I'm gonna sprinkle that around. Um, but sausage would be good or browned ground beef or a veggie pizza with thinly sliced veggies from the garden is also very delicious. And I've picked a bowl of these beautiful cherry tomatoes from the garden today. Olives would be delicious as well. Okay, take a look at our pizza. You'll see it's a little thinner in the center. As I mentioned, it's best to keep the toppings thin in the center so that it cooks through. And this looks great. It's time to get it in the oven. I almost forgot the Parmesan cheese. Don't forget the Parmesan cheese if you've got it. And if you want to add a little fresh rosemary, this is a good time to do that. I have some fresh basil, but we're going to reserve that for after the pizza is baked so it has the best flavor. All right, now it's really done. <laughs> I'm going to slide the pan directly onto the baking stone. And if you don't have a baking stone, just slide it right onto the rack in the center of the oven. Set the time for timer for 12 minutes. All right, let's check on our pizza. Ooh, the cheese is bubbly and it's developing those nice golden freckles. It looks delicious. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like also. I'm gonna cut a nice hefty slice of pizza here. You can use a pizza wheel or you can also use a clean pair of kitchen scissors. Those will work too. Let's get this on a plate. Oh, that looks fantastic. Delicious. Do you mind if I have a bite? Mmm. That is so good. The whole wheat flour in that crust goes so nicely with the toppings. Oh, yummy. But you know what's gonna be even better? Is your pizza made in your kitchen. Thank you for joining me today in my kitchen at Chocolate Box Cottage. I'll see you next time, bye-bye.